Thank you everyone for coming to my talk today. So today I will be talking about my PhD project and hopefully the impact it has on anti-cancer strategies um, through suffocating cancer one blood vessel at a time. So a little bit of background before we begin. What actually is cancer? Well, cancer is quite a complex disease, but essentially it starts off with a relatively healthy cell that for some reason or another acquires a mutation within its DNA. And this causes the, cancer, the cell to become cancerous and this cancerous cell essentially loses its capacity to control its growth and replication. And this causes the formation of an invasive mass, which is pretty nasty. But this is a very simplistic overview of what cancer actually is. Actually, cancer is made up of many different cell types and tissues that work together to make this mass. And it can occur pretty much anywhere in the body. So how do we organize this very complex disease? Well. There are many different characteristics that almost all tumours have in common and these are labelled as the hallmarks of cancers. So any of the keen biologists in the room might recognise this figure. It's from a seminal paper from Hannah Hannan Weinberg which encapsulates a number of characteristics which most cancers have in common. So for example, as I mentioned in the previous slide, it usually starts with a healthy cell that acquires a mutation and so this is uh, genome instability and mutational burden. Cells within this invasive mass are also able to get out of the mass and travel to distal sites and metastasize. This is activating invasion and metastasis. But my PhD project focuses on inducing or accessing the vasculature. And this occurs through a process called angiogenesis. So what is angiogenesis? Well, the word angiogenesis comes from angio, which means blood vessels, and genesis, which means creation. And this is essentially the formation of new blood vessels from pre-existing vessels. And our healthy body, of course, has many different blood vessels. And these play a critical role in transporting different cells around the body, as well as nutrients such as oxygen. And our cells are very smart. They are able to detect a lack of nutrients and give off something called an angiogenic factor. These factors then go along and activate some cells called endothelial cells. These endothelial cells line blood vessels and trigger them to activate, change their morphology and grow and proliferate to make new blood vessels. And cancers are no different. They also need their own blood supply to grow more than two millimetres cubed. And so they are also able to give off these angiogenic factors and activate endothelial cells to supply themselves with nutrients from our body. This is important in providing the tumour with nutrients, but as well as aiding metast metastatic spread. So of course, these um, angiogenic factors play a critical role in uh, anti-cancer therapy. They make a very attractive target. However, there are some current issues that we find with anti-angiogenic treatment. Firstly, um, angiogenic factors occur in pathological conditions such as cancer, but also our healthy condition. Therefore, targeting it can lead to some off-target effects. Many anti-angiogenic therapies are also coming in the form of antibodies, which are really large proteins that need to be given intravenously. And because they bind to their target very strongly, they have very low tissue perfusion. And that's essentially where my PhD project comes into play. So I'm interested in a protein called the C-typelectin domain group 14A protein, which is quite a mouthful. So for the rest of the presentation, I will call it CLEC14A. And this is a protein that exists on the surface of these endothelial cells which line the blood vessel. And it's comprised of a number of domains, um, but in the interest of time, I won't go through each domain. And I'd like to turn your attention to the C-typelectin domain, which is right at the start of the protein. And I'll come back to that domain and why it's so important later in the talk. But our lab have had a keen interest in clec 14 a for quite some time. Previously, we've shown quite interestingly that clec 14 a is only present on tumour tissue. So these are some results from an Im immunohistochemistry um, analysis where we probe a tissue with antibodies for our protein of interest, in our case, clec 14 a And we can see clec 14 a in this kind of blush pink colour that we see in the tumour tissues. And what we found when we looked at the corresponding matched normal tissue is that CLEC14A expression was no longer there. And so this shows that CLEC14A is expressed with specificity only on the tumour tissue, which makes it quite an attractive target for anti-cancer therapy. Our lab has also elucidated a number of roles for CLEC14A. 
previously, we've shown that clec 14 a plays a critical role in the process of angiogenesis. We found that clec 14 a contributes to tube formation as well as cell migration. So here are some results from a cell migration assay. And this involves essentially forming a gap between cells and timing them to see how long, bless you, timing them to see how long it takes for these cells to close the gap. And when we treat these cells with um, anti-serum that targets and blocks clec 14 a we found that the cells have a reduced capacity to block this gap, which shows that clec 14 a plays a role in cell migration, which is really important in angiogenesis. We also found that clec 14 a much like almost all other proteins, interacts with other proteins and can communicate. We found that clec 14 a interacts with a large protein called multimerin 2. And this, is actually, this actually exists outside of the cell. Now, that all-important domain that I was talking about earlier, that C-type lector domain, we found that this domain is responsible for binding to multimerin 2. And really interestingly, when we block the interaction between clec 14 a and multimerin 2 using antibodies, we get a marked reduction in tumour size in vivo. So all of this preliminary work led to the hypothesis that this interaction between my clec 14 a protein and multimerin 2 plays a critical role in tumour angiogenesis. And so what we wanted to do moving forward is to design a small molecule that can come along, that can block the interaction between clec 14 a and essentially stop angiogenesis in the tumour setting and cut off the nutrient supply to the tumours. So how do we go about designing a small molecule inhibitor? Well, firstly, we need to know exactly what our proteins look like, and most importantly, that C-type lectin domain. So for this, we did some molecular modelling of this C-type lectin domain, um, and we did this using AlphaFold, which some people might know about. It's a really great tool. Um, this might be quite difficult to see if, you, if you're not used to looking at proteins, but I just want to turn your attention to this model, and especially the part that's highlighted in red, which is a loop, flexible loop structure. So it starts off, I hope you can see my mask, over here. We get one loop that loops upwards. This is followed by a short beta sheet and then another loop which loops upwards and stands adjacent to that first loop and then terminates at the base. So we have two loops that are relatively flexible. And the reason I'm turning your attention to this loop structure is because other C-type lectin domain containing proteins often have this looping loop structure which is critical in binding to other partner proteins. So therefore, we wanted to further study this um, loopy loop structure and try and see if we can identify which amino acids within this loopy loop structure bind directly to multimerin 2. And so for that, we decided to start mutating residues within this loopy loop structure. We decided to target only amino acid residues that were projecting out because these would be the residues that would be binding to other proteins. We also wanted to change them all to alanine, which is a pretty simple amino acid. And so I went on a rampage and I mutated both of the loops. So we have loads of mutations and in the interest of time, I won't go through every single mutation and the results that we got, but I will highlight some important uh, mutations that we made. To study whether these mutant proteins were able to bind or not bind to multimerin 2, we did a small assay called a far western. And I'll quickly go through what a far western is. It's very similar to a western blot, if anyone knows what that is. Essentially, you have your protein of interest, in our case, either normal or mutant forms of clec 14 a We run it along a gel and then we transfer it onto a membrane. So here we have the membrane depicted with our clec 14 a So we have our normal clec 14 a or our mutants. This membrane is then incubated with your partner protein of interest. So in my case, it's multimerin 2. We want to see whether clec 14 a binds to multimerin 2. We then wash this off and then we probe that membrane uh, with antibodies that target multimerin 2 to see if multimerin 2 stuck to the membrane by binding to clec 14 a We then went on to, we then probed the membrane with a secondary antibody uh, conjugated to horseradish peroxidase and this essentially allows us to actually visualise the gel and look at our bands. And here are the results. <coughs> so on the left hand side we have our normal clec 14 a and as we can see by this big thick blot we found that it's able to bind to multimerin 2 as we would expect. And quite interestingly, we made a triple mutant where we mutated three amino acid residues within this loop, this loop and loop structure. We found that this triple mutant was unable to bind to multimerin 2. And so essentially the area of this amino acid, these amino acids is this red bit that I've highlighted. 
Because this is a triple mutant where all three amino acids are mutated to alanine, we then went on to make double mutants to identify if it was two of the mutants within this triple mutant that blocked binding with multimerin 2. And here are the results. So we found that all of the double mutants as well were unable to bind to multimerin 2. So then we went and made single point mutations of the amino acid residues within this triple mutant. And here's what we found. So looking at the single mutants, we found that they were able to bind to multimerin 2, but the bands are quite small and weak compared to the wild type or the normal CLEC14A. So this shows it's able to bind to multimerin 2, but has a much reduced capacity. So here we've confirmed that this area of CLEC14A C-type lectin domain blocks that binding with multimerin 2. So moving forward, what we wanted to do was design a small peptide, which is essentially a really small protein made up of amino acids, um, that mimic this part of CLEC14A. So here is the peptide that we designed. And next, what we want to do is test its blocking capacity to block its interaction or compete with CLEC14A for binding with multimerin 2 and hopefully use that as an anti-cancer strategy. Because this is a small a molecule inhibitor, it increases tissue perfusion and it can be given orally. As well as that, it's more specific than current anti-angiogenic therapy because it's tumour specific. CLEC14A, as I showed earlier, is only expressed on the tumour tissue. And so hopefully this will allow us to overcome the current issues that we see in anti-cancer, anti-angiogenic therapy. And that is my talk. Um, I'd like to thank my supervisors, Dr. Victoria Heath and Professor Roy Bicknell. Sadly, I don't have a picture with them. So this is a picture of my lab bench and this is where all of the magic happens. I love this place so much. And I also want to thank the Medical Research Council that funded me, interestingly, as part of their impact doctoral training program. Um, thank you for listening.